Sparks, do you see this badge? Do you see this badge? This badge means I'm rich. This badge means I own everything. This badge means that I just bought a Toyota with a cherry on top. Welcome back to Sparkplug TV. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sparkplug TV, where I do car reviews for literally everybody, and not just car enthusiasts. Today, I'm going to be reviewing this 2022 Lexus UX 250H, thanks to Johnson Lexus of Raleigh. Johnson Lexus, with locations in Raleigh and Durham, is the highest selling luxury brand dealership in North Carolina and the surrounding states. Check the link in the description below. Now, of course, before I begin, please don't forget to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below whether you like this car or not. Listen, I grew up in a very anti-Toyota and Lexus environment, and to this day, my dad would never be caught dead in one of these things. What's wire hangers doing in this closet when I told you no wire hangers ever? And for that matter, I don't think anybody else in my family would either. And I mean for good reason. The engines are typically pretty slow, minus the LFA of course. And the technology always tends to lag behind at least a decade or so sometimes. And I mean, let's be honest, my dad is just biased towards German engineered cars because our last name is like literally German, so. At any rate, I wanted to get my hands on this Lexus today to see for myself whether I could break this Kluver bias and see if I actually like it. The 2022 Lexus UX is Lexus's subcompact crossover hatchback-like SUV, was originally released for the 2019 model year and is aptly named UX, which stands for Urban Explorer, but we'll get into why it's called that later. The UX has effectively replaced the Lexus CT model as Lexus's entry-level luxury car. The UX shares its subcompact unibody platform with the Corolla, the Corolla Cross, and the Toyota CHR, as well as the Prius. The UX250H is the UX's hybrid version powered by a 2.0 liter inline four cylinder engine coupled to a 24 kilowatt nickel metal hydride battery. Nickel metal hydride batteries are pretty old considering most hybrids and EVs all have lithium ion batteries now. This powertrain is then tied to a CVT transmission outputting 181 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs. But like in terms of the pound feet of torque, I legitimately could not find that statistic anywhere. It's not even on Lexus's website. The 200 models has a pound foot torque of 150, but all 250 models have been left blank on their website and like car and driver, nobody had it. So if you know what it is, let me know down below. So I would probably say that the biggest selling point of the UX250H is the gas mileage. It has a combined EPA rating of 39 miles per gallon with 41 miles per gallon in the city and 38 miles per gallon on the highway. If you do get the UX200 model, you're only losing about five miles per gallon, so there's really not that huge of a difference between the two in terms of that number, but that's definitely the biggest selling point of the hybrid version, so I would buy it for that reason, but that might be the only reason I would buy it. This specific UX has an all-wheel drive powertrain, but the UX200 models come with the front-wheel drive instead. For the all-wheel drive drivetrain, the gas motor powers the front wheels, and the battery in the back drives the back wheels. Sadly, however, she does take her sweet ass time to get up to 60 miles per hour at an incredibly depressing 8.6 seconds. Like, sheesh. And what's even more depressing is the 110 miles per hour top speed. I mean, I thought luxury cars were supposed to like glue me to my seat, not make me come unglued in traffic. The UXs come in six different styles and starts at a meager $34,225 and can be optioned up to an equally meager $41,465. This mid-range style is thirty-eight thousand seven hundred and forty-five dollars because it does have a few added luxury features. But like, I just can't even wrap my head around how cheap this supposed luxury car is. It almost feels like wrong. Like, I need something to make me feel more opulent. You know, like I need something to really take me to the luxury experience. I really just need to feel something more. Like, you know, Sebastian, fetch me my cognac. I think it's pretty appropriate to talk about the UX's dimensions, seeing as this thing is branded as an SUV. All the UX models have a wheelbase of 103.9 inches, and overall the UX is 177 inches long, 
and 61 inches tall. In terms of width, only about 72 inches wide. You know, I might keep this on because it's actually a little chilly out today. It's very windy. So this is the front end. It's very typical Lexus, especially the grill with this oversized grill and this kind of L shape that it's got going on with the chrome accent down at the bottom. The fascia is pretty standard across most Lexuses, except, I mean, they're even bigger when it comes to the GX. I do like the headlights and the high beams. I like the design of this like, you know, L on each side. And they've added these two other beams down here for the running lights. If you do get the luxury or the F Sport, you can get a three dotted headlamp. Now, the only difference between the F Sport and the luxury pack is that this front air vent is a little bit bigger and a little bit more flagrant in terms of styling, whereas this one's just a little bit smaller and doesn't really have a lot going on. I don't dislike the front end. I think it's standard Lexus. It's not for everybody. I know, for example, like my dad came and looked outside at this car and he hated it, of course. I mean, but again, he's bias. Now on to the side profile. So the side profile is very unibody SUV looking like, but it does have the long swooping line right here with an angular kind of front fender look up here. And then this long swooping line down here as well. I like the way that it looks. I don't, I don't dislike it. And I think that the door handles are like just the perfect size. And I also do like the design of the side mirrors. The only thing I don't like about the side is going to be these plastic fenders. These make the car look so cheap. Like why? Like I get like money, like I get it, but like these are so cheap looking. I'm in a mink coat. I don't want plastic fenders. In the F Sport and the luxury pack, all of this is going to be painted, right? And so that would make it look a lot better. And I understand that like people are going to want like a super entry level luxury car, but oh my God. <laughs> it just takes away from the fantasy. I, I can't, like, it just... It's not the vibe. <laughs> but at any rate, I mean, the rims are 18 inches. You can get 19 inch five spoke rims and they're pretty basic looking. I mean, there's, they're painted gray with silver accents and I'm, they, you know, they're nothing, they're nothing too crazy, just like the front end, just pretty standard Lexus. Wait, let me see if I can... Okay, so if I had to rank my three favorite sides of this car in terms of style and design, I would probably put the front end at dead last, I would put the side profile at second place, and then I would put the back end in first place because this is a nice booty. I like the light bar. I like the kind of like a flying buttress take on the light bar with these like wings on each side. The Lexus website refers to them as aerodynamic taillights, which I don't know how much it actually adds to it, but it might, but it does kind of share a similar you know, angular shape that the front has. It's less gaudy, I think. Of course, you do have the highlighted blue Lexus symbol to let other people know that you're driving a hybrid. And then, of course, my favorite feature, plastic. Plastic! So then, if you do have the F Sport and the luxury pack, you can get the option where you, like, kick your foot under and then it will automatically open the lift gate. Of course, this is the base model slash mid-range, so you don't have that. But when you do open up the trunk, you do get 21 cubic square feet of storage, and then you double that if you put the seats down in the back to about 40 cubic square feet. Not the biggest in the subcompact range uh, in terms of cargo storage, but you're also not going to get a lot because it is a subcompact car anyway. And don't ask me to sit in the back of this because I I couldn't even fit in here if I tried. Should I try? No, I have a mink coat on. That sounds luxurious. So welcome to the interior. I'm trying a different angle today. I wanted to, I don't know, spice it up a little, I guess. I think that the interior, it's great. I like it a whole lot. I like the fact that it's um, driver centric, but not too much. You know, sometimes these driver centric cars get a little out of hand and it's almost like, like it's mine. Like don't, don't touch my buttons. Like, so the dashboard I think in general is really, really nice. I like that it's got this kind of angle right here for the gauge cluster and angles up towards the steering wheel. These buttons are interesting. I think that this is an interesting take on like the sport normal and then the traction. You're kind of being able to control the style of how you want to drive this thing. You know, up here you've got this like soft touch plastic and then you've got this leather trim here with the nice blue stitching. And then this material is a little chintzy. It's not the most expensive, but it's not bad. And then down here, at least on the passenger side anyway, there is this soft touch plastic. And then down here, it's a little bit cheaper on the plastic. A huge gripe that I have though. Albeit, I love the interior, but the biggest 
gripe I have with this is the fact that they like, it feels so unfinished on this door. Why didn't they extend this blue leather material like on this sill right here? Or like, you know, over there, like why didn't they extend it over that part of the sill as well? It just feels so unfinished. I know that like if you do have the luxury pack, you know, it does come with the memory seating here, but like this just feels so cheap right here. I don't know why they would do that. Oh my God. In my Toyota 4Runner video, I complained about the fact that you just pulled down on the gear selector. Do you think that they listened to me? Do you think Lexus and Toyota listened to me? The power that that has, the intelligence that that has, the clearance that that has, the access that that has, the influence that that has, the profile that that has, the international implications that that has. Because you actually get to like press a button and shift gears in this one. The automatic park brake is great because the uh, the park brake button is all the way down here. Like, I, you can't even see it. Like, so I'm glad that it turns on for you because I'm not gonna reach down there to do that. In terms of the infotainment screen, the infotainment screen is eight inches in this one. You can opt for the 10 inch one. The trackpad is a huge hot debate online. And I think that the trackpad, it's hit and miss, I think. It's like, it's not that bad, but it is a little difficult to kind of like get around in the trackpad. Like sometimes you feel like you're only going to the apps, but you really actually scrolled all the way to the projection, you know, reticle. I do like the fact that it does have haptic feedback, and I do like the fact that you do have to press the button all the way in and it makes like a button and a beep noise. The radio, volume, media, and next song and previous song buttons are interesting. They're all kind of laid out right here. Like, of course, when you're driving, like your hand's gonna be right here. You can change the volume with that. But I think like the steering wheel has enough buttons on it to make up for it anyway. So you can just, I found myself more so controlling the music and stuff with the steering wheel more so than down here. Now this is dual zone automatic climate control system. You know, I like the fact that these are all tactile buttons. I like the way that they feel. You push them up and down you know, for some of the buttons, not for all of them. You can control the climate control system with your voice, but that's about the only thing that you can really control with your voice. You do have two USB ports up here. It's really cool that you can kind of like open and close it like on both sides. That's a really interesting thing. The gauge cluster is an interesting kind of art deco kind of piece. There's like these lines that kind of like multiply out and then it's kind of got like an LFA kind of look. On the left hand side, it's, it's, it just screams Toyota on the left hand side. It's just very, you can find the same operating system in a forerunner that you can find in this. I, I just think that that could be changed a little bit. I like the analog clock and I like the fact that because it is a hybrid vehicle, you don't necessarily need the RPMs, but then when you switch it into sport, it will show you the RPMs. To be honest, if I own this car, I'd probably keep it in sport the whole time just because. Oh, the sound system? Sound system is superb. I really like it. I think it sounds really great. You can also get the optional eight speaker sound system. But overall, I think it's a really nice sound system. You can also get, you know, the optional paddle shifters. You can get optional automatic folding side mirrors. You can get a heated steering wheel. The one qualm I have about this too is the fact that like, this doesn't have standard heated seats. I don't know. I thought it would have had standard heated seats. I think that hey, my Elantra, I'm so tired of talking about it, but my Elantra has heated seats. Come on. I don't know. I just like, come on. This has to have heated seats, especially for like a luxury car. Like you're going to make me pay extra for heated seats. It's probably not that much. Also over here, all of these buttons are empty. I know I'm talking a lot negatively about it, but I think on the whole, I think that this is a very nicely designed and, and nice to touch, except for maybe this plastic over here. I think everything else is very nice. And the seats. I'm not a big fan of the blue seats. Everybody that I've shown this car to in my personal life really likes the blue seats and the two-tone color. I like the blue on the, on the dashboard, but I don't like it on the seats. I like the different materials and the different stitching and the different, and the way that it's like kind of got this groove to it. And the seats are very comfortable themselves. You know, I would want it in a different color, but it's overall, it's not bad. And then I think into, also with the infotainment system, I think it is a little difficult to kind of like navigate through the infotainment screen. If you're not fluent on Lexus, then it will definitely take some getting used to. I don't think it's nearly as sketchy as the Volvo's infotainment system, but it's definitely does take some time to get used to it. Oh my God, how could I forget? There's a CD player in here. Who the f listens to CDs anymore? Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm not even gonna try to fit back here. 
you really have to move the seat like all the way up because there is absolutely no room back here. It is nightmarish. And even if you do move it up to the point that I could fit back here, it's not even that like comfortable to sit in. I think the only like convenience in the back is that there are two vents back here for the air conditioning as well as there are two USB chargers. But I don't think that there's going to be that many people that sit in the back of this thing because there's not a lot of room. But now that I have done everything, uh, let's take her out for a spin. Uh, bye. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's very quiet though. Okay, now the engine turned on. And so since we're uh, starting with the engine, I can go ahead and say that uh, the engine sounds like a lawnmower. It is just, it's not what I want it to be. You know, like I said, like with the whole luxury thing, you know, glued and unglued, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm mowing my lawn while I'm going down the road. Like, okay, I'll put it into sport mode and I'll even slide it over to the sport setting Yeah, it just, it's not, no. <laughs> Additionally, I think that the CVT transmission is smooth when you're just driving by yourself. Like when you're not tampering with it, you're not shifting it into manual mode or anything like that, I think it's fine. But when I shift it over into manual mode, it is so numb. Like at least, and I keep using this as a ref point of reference, but again, that's like all I have to drive right now is my Elantra. I don't like CVT transmissions. No car enthusiast does. But I think that like for my Elantra, like it at least has some life in it that when you're shifting gear gears or tightening the belt, I guess, for the CVT transmission, like you can at least feel the difference in gear shifting, right? Or when the belt tightens, but in this, when you, when you shift it over into manual, it always starts out in fourth gear. I don't, it, that's always been a Toyota thing. I don't understand why. When you shift down, it's just, it's so numb. I can't, I can barely feel it. One positive thing though, I think that the overall ride quality is, is nice. I mean, it's definitely smooth. I think the run flat tires on this thing are a little, it takes away from the luxury experience. I think that the run flats definitely make a lot of road noise. In general, I think it's a quiet ride. The turning is pretty nimble, I, I'm not gonna lie. And you know, the the website, another selling point, I'm I keep talking about selling points in this, but the, another selling point on this UX is the turn radius. So it's called the Urban Explorer because it's got a 17 foot turn radius, which apparently is huge, which is like a great turning radius for a car of this size. And I mean, you can see in this shot right here that I tested it out and I mean, it was fine. I don't know. I didn't really see a, a huge difference in the turning radius, but according to Lexus's website, it's like one of the best ones on the market, so. And the fact that there's like no, there's only one drivetrain for the whole car. It's just that one two liter, either the hybrid or no hybrid. I don't know, I, I wish, you know, especially I think it's kind of gimmicky. Like the F Sport, you still got the same two liter. Like what, like I don't understand. Like, can you just like, if it's gonna be the F Sport, sure, like it's just, it gives you the F Sport styling and like the bolstered seats and the paddle shifters and you know, the heated steering wheel and stuff like that. But where is the sport aspect of it? I don't know. I just, I guess it's just like a marketing gimmick. It's like in the Mercedes, it's like you get an AMG and then you get the AMG line where it's like, or the Audi, you get the S and then the S line where it's like you get the features of it, but you could also upgrade the drivetrain if you wanted. But for this, you know, I'm throwing it into sport mode and I'm taking my usual corner. Oh, I'm at 60. Like, I just... <laughs> okay, so I'm coming up on this tight corner. You know, 
it does have a lower center of gravity, but you can feel the ute aspect of it when you're taking corners. <sighs> it's not bad, but it's not the best, right? That corner that I just took, it was kind of hard to keep it in that corner, but I, I mean, it did push back a little bit, I will say. Now I am going to take her out onto the highway, like I do always when I have a steering pilot assist and all that good stuff. All right, here we go. Let that lawnmower get up to speed. It's on. What's interesting about this version of the automated driving and the, okay, this is a little harsh. It's a little jumpy when it comes to a complete stop. Nope, that was scary. Okay. I don't know, this is, it's an iffy system. I think bottom line with the steering pilot and the steering assist, it's iffy. I think it's marginal. Okay, girlies, final thoughts. So thanks again for watching today's video. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you feel so inclined, smash that bell icon. Now, on to the pros and cons and my final thoughts of the vehicle. I am not totally in love with it by any means, but I don't hate it. I think it's a great entry luxury vehicle, you know, at the price point. And I like the fact that it's pretty customizable up until a certain point. So the pros I think would be the interior. I think that the interior itself is, it's very nicely designed. It's very nicely done. I really enjoy the interior. Another pro would definitely be the steering. The steering on the car is extremely smooth. It's very nice. Um, it feels like a luxury steering kind of like setting. The ride in general is great. I think that the suspension is pretty good. It has a lower center of gravity because of the battery and because it's like a smaller car. I really like the back end of the car. The, the front end of the car is just typical Lexus. There's not really much that you can kind of like say yay or nay against it. I think the overall design of the car in general on the exterior and the interior are pretty good. So the cons would be the eight inch infotainment screen. It's a little too small for me. Another con would be the fact that the seats are not here. Uh, I mean, I expect them to be at least heated in a luxury car. I understand that like cooled is going to be an extra option, but this, these aren't even heated. Like, come on. A con would probably be, you know, the safety features like the, the lane keep assist and the steering assist. It's a little too jerky when it comes to like stopping and starting again, like especially stopping at a light. Another con would be the cargo storage and the back seat space. There is like, especially for like a grown adult like me, I need a lot of leg room up front to drive. And that leaves absolutely nothing for the back passenger. What are they supposed to do? <laughs> so I think my final thoughts of this would probably be, I don't think that I would get it if it was this model. I don't think that like the, the basic UX 250H cuts it for me. I think I need, if I'm gonna have a luxury car, like I don't need every single luxury feature that there is, but I need to at least have it, you know, amped up just a little bit, you know, especially with like a bigger screen and a heated seat. But yeah, I mean, the, the thing about Lexus and Toyota for me anyways, is that like, you can't hate it, but you can't love it either. I mean, like, I'm not like in love with this thing, but I'm like, I'm, I'm like right in the middle of the road when it comes to this. It's not, it's, it's not bad. Anyways, thanks again to Johnson Lexus of Raleigh for sponsoring today's video. And thank you guys for watching. And I will see you when I see ya next time hopefully soon hey sparks thanks for watching today's video if you want more spark plug tv content click right here right here you got two options <laughs> choose one or both <laughs>